One of the few benefits of staying home during quarantine is the fact that many of us are getting the opportunity to finally watch all the things that we've been saving up on our queue and neither forgot about or, quite frankly, haven't had the time for. I did this myself the other night with a little movie called Joker. Hi, I'm Linda. This is Linda's World, and this is my official commentary on how the Joker movie starring Joaquin Phoenix that I saw about a week ago is probably one of the most impactful films of our generation regarding mental illness in an ambivalent and uncaring society. So, if you want to see my comments on that, and I've got plenty, well then stick around, because this episode of Linda's World starts right now. Our commentary starts in just a moment, but first there are three specific things that I want to say and get it out of the way. Thing number one, if you're one of my more lighthearted viewers, then I totally understand if you want to watch this video with your finger on the fast forward bar of your device, your hand on the remote control, or even not at all, because there may or may not be some graphic images and or video clips involving Joker inserted into this video. I totally understand if you want to click out. Now, thing number two is that I realize very much that I am not a mental health professional. I'm a high school English teacher and YouTuber, but that doesn't mean that I have not spent the better part of 25 years studying psychology, first as a student in college who was interested in the material, and then later as a person diagnosed with four different mental disorders, and I wanted to teach people I know how to deal with a person like me and educate myself on my disorders. Okay. Now, the third thing I want to get out of the way is that if you're just finding this video by happenstance and you are not yet a member of Linda's World, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below and hit the notification bell while you're at it so you can tell when all new videos upload to this channel. Linda's World is an inspirational channel, a place where you can come to gain the tools you need to live your best life, even when you're not exactly living your best life. And now, the commentary. <laughs> now, okay, I have to get this said. When The Joker starring Joaquin Phoenix first came out last year, I saw the commercial and I thought, oh my god, another one? That's the last thing we need is another friggin' Batman movie. Didn't Heath Ledger settle this already? And everyone was like, no, no, it's not like that. They deal with the story differently. Fine. So I saw the official trailer online and I went, oh, it's not like that. They deal with the story differently. Right? And so I made up my vow to go see it. But then, of course, as is what happens in my life, I made plans and they didn't turn out and I didn't get to see it in the theater and there you go. And then, quite frankly, I kind of just forgot about it, right? Then came the pandemic. And so I was quarantined. And about a week ago, I was messing around on YouTube and I saw Joker ending explained. And I said, do I want this spoiler? Yeah, I kind of do. And so I put it on and I went, I have to see this movie. So I spent the 10 bucks on Apple and I saw this movie, okay? And I turned up my lights and I got my snack food and I watched it like a film and I was like, holy bejesus, okay? And so just saying that number one, this is not gonna be just a straight up movie commentary. This is not a movie review I'm doing here. This is a self-help channel. So I'm talking about its relationship to mental health. Okay, and also I want to say that this is the point where spoilers start coming at you like crazy. So if you haven't seen Joker yet, click out. <laughs> Just click out. How far are we into this video? About three minutes? Click out. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> now I'm going to be talking about the situation, um, but I want to harp on this four specific things that I picked out personally that I think say what I need to say. Four scenes, I should say. Let's say what I need to say. The first one is the beginning of the film when Arthur Fleck, um, Joaquin Phoenix, before he was Joker, um, is putting on his makeup to be a clown um, for his job in the mirror, and he's practicing his clown face, and he's stretching his skin out to clown up, right? Making the face, and there's a tear coming down his eye, right? And you can see because it messes up his black makeup. Okay, and um, the second one is the infamous triple homicide on the subway. Okay, and the third one I call kind of 3A, 3B. It's the stairs. Okay, first his trudging up the stairs nightly to get home, and then later his infamous dance. Okay, and finally, the speech that he makes when he's become Joker on Murray Franklin's show, Robert De Niro's show, right? That where he explains himself. Okay, so those are the four things that I'm going to be harping on because they tell me what I need to know about this movie's um, concept of mental illness. Now, um, the Joker takes place before Batman is Batman, okay? Bruce Wayne is like nine in this movie and like living with his parents. His parents are alive, right? 
And so, and Arthur Fleck is just a fellow living in Gotham. And the way they have Gotham set up is like New York City, 1981. Now, I was four in 1981, but I live in New York, and I remember my mother turning her rings around in the subway. I remember garbage strikes. I remember just piles and piles of dirt and trash and yuck. And I remember like a disgruntled police force. And that was the year that we had the highest recorded number of homicides in New York City, like ever. And um, it was just a, it's a bloodbath of a, just bankrupt awful city right it was just new york was at its lowest right and so they set gotham to be like that right because it has to be so that arthur fleck isn't getting noticed um and also finding it hard to make ends meet and also has his psychology program like the lady that he goes to speak to about his problems that program is cut because of lack of funding right and thomas wayne like batman's dad right he wants to run for mayor because he feels like he can clean up gotham okay so we know this, right? Okay, so now, first and foremost, the tear scene. So when I saw this, I immediately thought of Ariana Grande's fake smile. And also I thought of myself. Um, and also I thought of Pagliacci, the infamous sad clown in the opera, right? Basically, the point is, like, we're supposed to see that, like, Arthur Fleck is such a downtrodden person. He lives barely paycheck to paycheck with his mom in a dinky, crappy apartment in a bad building in, like, a crappy section of Gotham. Like, he's just a miserable person. He has various conflicts in his life. He's not taken seriously. No one gives a shit about him. Everyone thinks he's strange. He suffers from pseudo-bulbar affect. Um, that's the disorder that usually comes from blunt force trauma to the head or any other brain injury where you laugh or cry out of context with your emotions and even carries a little card that says, pardon my laughter, um, I have a disorder, right? So he's just all messed up, right? And so he's got every reason in the world to not like smile, but he's got to dress up to be a clown because he's got to make ends meet, right? So he's putting on his makeup and that's when he's stretching his skin and that at the beginning when he stretches his skin up and like just tries to force a smile out of himself right and you see the tear i personally resonated with that because i can't tell you how many times in 43 years how how many how what is what's 43 times 365 that's how much that's how many days out of my life i relate to the fact that arthur fleck has to phony up in order to make a dollar right and like, and it's the classic irony of the sad clown, right? So like that and that tear, because it's like, it's like, that's real Arthur. That's who he is, you know, and he can't be that because that's not how like clowns are. And that's not how people want him to be. And that's not how he earns a living. So he plasters on the fake smile as we all have had to do at some point in our lives, some of us more than others, right? And goes out and does his job, right? And of course, the kids steal his little sign and beat the shit out of him. And you know, like, of course, that's not a good way to spend his day. So now, of course, this is the first like place where I was like, okay, so this is a, this is not a story about a Batman villain. This is a story about a troubled man. This is a story of mental health. Okay. And so now, of course, we have number two, the infamous triple homicide on the subway. Okay, so Arthur has just been fired because he, um, the, a man gave him a gun, um, his, um, one of his co-workers, because he was beaten the crap out of in the alleyway by those, by those hooligans, um, a friend of his at his job gave him a weapon to protect himself, right? And so he had his gun on him when he went to go uh, pose as a clown at like a kid's wing in a hospital and it fell out when he was dancing. So of course he's fired because he had a firearm in the hospital, you know? Um, and so he... You know, it's not like that, blah, 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 but they still fire. So he's on his way home on the train, and that's when everything starts taking off. That's when we have a triple homicide. Um, if you've seen the film, that's, uh, quite frankly, a lot of people are going to turn to this and say, no, this is when Arthur went bad. No, this is not when Arthur went bad. This is when Arthur started standing up for himself and for the rights of others, quite frankly. Because if you recall, the three Wall Street-looking dudes, they were drunk and one guy had the french fries. And he was pelting them at the lady. There was a lady on the train. And they were trying to get her attention. They're like, oh, bitch, why aren't you going to talk to us, right? And they were giving her hell. And had Arthur not been on that subway car, it's entirely possible that they would have assaulted or raped this lady. Okay, but <clears throat> Arthur starts laughing. Okay, um, pseudo barbar effect, he can't help it, he starts to laugh. So he laughs, and that distraction is enough for that lady to move train cars. Okay, so she's saved. And of course, their attentions turn on Arthur, and they beat the bejesus out of him, and you know, and he fights back because he's got his weapon. Okay, that's when he takes out his gun and shoots two of the three of the guys. Right now, here's where. I may get a difference of opinion, okay? Because this is when um, the third guy gets out, you know, and he runs the platform and he's gonna go up the steps, you know, to go outside. And he's like, ah, help, help, you know, and he's running. And Arthur shoots the man in the back, 
right? Now you're gonna say, but Linda, that's murder, that's not self-defense. Isn't it though? Okay, didn't that guy have a have a play a hand in that? And if I'm not mistaken, he's the guy who was pelting the french fries at the lady, okay? So basically, Arthur did a good deed, okay? And of course, no good deed goes unpunished because now he's like, you know, a suspect in the murder or he's a person wanted for questioning because the police like come and like want to ask him questions, right? So this is the situation. Now, what a lot of people will see as a man shooting three men on the subway I see as a man who officially can't take any more, okay? And with nothing else to help him, you know, with no program that he can enter, with no pills he can take besides what they've already given him, with no outlet for his emotions, with nothing to turn to, okay? This is a man who can't do it anymore. And if you pick on him one more effing time, he's gonna pick back, okay? And he does with his gun, three times, okay, saving a woman's life, I might add, and there it is. I don't consider that murder, but maybe that's me, okay? Now, the next concept is the concept of the stairs, okay? And so they, I personally, like as an English teacher, I look for symbolism, okay, in everything, right? And so take a look at the stairs. Now, if you've seen the film, you know about the stairs. There's a large amount of them, okay? And every friggin' day, okay, that Arthur has to come home. He goes, um, once in a while, stops at the liquor store, right, and he comes home, and he's gotta trudge up those stairs, right? And you see him at a certain point with like his members only jacket, you know, and his little bottle, right? And he's like, and he's going up, and it's like, fuck, like I can't, like I can't anymore. And those stairs, I believe, truly represent Arthur's life, okay? He just, can't climb one more stair okay it's bleak it's dark it's wet it's gray it's depressing and those stairs lead him home where he's safe from the world around him but he has to climb all those stairs just to even get home so like in other words he has a person has to it's in other words like literally he has to climb a bunch of stairs to get to his house metaphorically figuratively as an english this is english linda speaking is that he that it's like we have to climb the mountain we have to climb much stairs okay to to be in a in a the cocoon of our safety we have to go through the great uphill battle to get to our safe place okay and then what's effed up is that it turns out to even not be his safe place because he has that whole fantasy about dating that girl that like in the movie with the kid from his building that isn't true but that's how his life could have been okay he has the whole fantasy of being on murray franklin's show and the guy was like you know if i had a kid i'd want him to be just like you okay that's the life he could have had okay and you know if he didn't have his mom with her issues if he didn't have his own mental health issues if if gotham had the fortitude to put forth something to help him okay and so it's that, that 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 could have been his life and it's not okay and so where do we see the stairs again when he embraces the character of joker because when he does and when he puts on the cool suit and everything and the makeup and all and he fully embraces himself into the joker well then he starts dancing down the stairs and this might be the one time in this dude's life that he didn't have a care in the world this is him this is they might as well have played i'm coming out by diana ross okay because he he came out and he was like this is me and it's interesting that he should choose to put a mask on to be his real self usually when we hear of who's your real self we talk about taking off a mask okay but he's not doing that he's choosing to embrace his out of control laughter, embrace his bad stand up comedian job. He's choosing to embrace all the funniness of his life and he's embracing the character of the clown. And once he says, life is a big joke, therefore it can't hurt me, which is such a defense mechanism for so many people with mental illness, then he can only, then he, then, then and only then can he dance on the damn stairs. Okay? So there he dances and it's, and it's beautiful. And so, of course, the cops stop him and say, hey, Arthur, we want to talk to you. But that's a whole other story, you know. Like I said, it's not a movie review. We're talking about mental health here. And so those stairs represent Arthur's life. It's the climb. You know, like um like the climb by um by by Miley Cyrus, you know. So there you have it. And finally, we come to the fourth and final thing on our list, which is his speech to Murray Franklin on the show. Now, 
he is going to Murray Franklin's show, right? And like the whole town of Gotham has embraced this like clown thingy and this guy's in a clown mask will go into rally saying kill the rich and like, you know, this and that because they're sick and tired of the, it's like the 1% is, is, you know, the Waynes really are taking everything and there's all the people of Gotham standing up for a better tomorrow, finally, like Occupy Wall Street kind of thing, right? And, and, and Arthur is this like unknowing, um, like flag for the cause, right? Like he didn't even intend to be a hero, but there he is, they've taken Arthur's face, you know, as their own, or his clown face as their own to pr to protest the inhumane treatment of Gotham and, and the working class, right? So all that is wonderful, but the thing is that Arthur is due on Murray Franklin's show as Joker, right? So he comes in and they're like, listen, no foul language and no this and you know that. And he's like, yeah, no Murray, I've got you. I've been watching you for years, it's all good. And he comes out, okay? And that's when he says his speech. That's when he admits on live national television that he killed those three Wall Street guys, those three guys that work for Wayne Industries, okay? And of course, Robert De Niro's character, you know, Murray Franklin, like, sort of turns on him. It's like, you know, oh, the pity party, Arthur, you know, like, what are you saying? Is that, are you trying to claim that's your defense, that you're crazy? And he's like, no. He's like, let me tell you something, okay? He's like, when I, he goes, if it were me, out there, you know, if I, if it were me bleeding out on the street, he goes, you walk right over me. Okay. He goes, and this is his, this is when he stands up for the, for, for the public. He says, and, and for himself as well. He says like that, what, as, as the speech goes, he's like, nobody, he's like, he's like, every, nobody's civil anymore. Everybody just yells and screams and they don't know what it's like to be the other guy. You know, like if people like Thomas Wayne knew for one day what it was like to live in myself, you know, right? And of course, you know, people poo poo him and they're like, well, that's not a defense for having killed three fellows, you know, whatever. And, and there it is. If it was me dying on the sidewalk, you'd walk Aww. right over me. I pass you every day and you don't Aww. notice me. But these guys, what, because Thomas Wayne, we cried about them on TV? You have a problem with Thomas Wayne. Too. Yes, I do. Have you seen what it's like out there, Murray? Do you ever actually leave the studio? Everybody just yells and screams at each other. Nobody's civil anymore. Nobody thinks what it's like to be the other guy. You think men like Thomas Wayne ever think what it's like to be someone like me? To be somebody but themselves, they don't. They think that we'll just sit there and take it like good little boys, that we won't werewolf and go wild. <clears throat> what do we take from all this? Okay, and at the end of the movie, we see him gleefully walking with blood printed feet, indicating he may have killed that lady, or maybe not. Maybe it was all in his fantasy. Okay, in the asylum, where maybe he'll get the help he needs, or maybe he'll spend the rest of his life banging his head against the rubber wall. Okay, we don't know. Okay, and that's why, I mean, there hasn't been a sequel as of yet, so that's what we know. Okay. So putting this all together, what do we make of this? Well, I'm telling you right now, I, there were several moments in this movie where I like, and I'm not a movie crier where I kind of cried because I, I thought to myself, I'm like, this is it. Like, this is like, ladies and gentlemen who, who went to the movies expecting to see the, the, um, the origin of the Joker. Well, you didn't get that. Instead you got pretty much like an almost an almost documentary style view of what happens when a human being, okay, who doesn't exactly play with a full deck at all times, okay, and has their own personal um, idiosyncrasies and a couple of um, illnesses up in here, okay, what happens when that person is stepped on continuously, lied to continuously, treated like crap, mentally and emotionally abused, every single day of his life, okay? Not given the help he needs by anybody and laughed at and made into an unwilling hero for a cause that he didn't even know was true, okay? What happens then? He turns, okay? And what does he have to turn into? If you notice, it wasn't Joker turns to Arthur, it was Arthur turns to Joker. What does he turn into? He's like, I am what you made me, okay? I'm the joke. I'm, I'm so sick of being laughed at that I'm, I'm turning the joke on myself, okay? And that's how I choose to live my life. You can't touch me anymore. I live in my own personal reality right now, okay? And that mask that he puts on, or I mean, it's, you know, it's face paint, whatever. It's not a mask, like in plastic or whatever. But that face paint that he puts on, that joker face that he erects, okay? That 
is the ultimate defense mechanism and the last possible alternative for a man who's been asking for help for like 40 years and has gotten absolutely nowhere. Okay. And that is what I take away from the Joker movie. And it was played so incredibly brilliantly by Joaquin Phoenix that I tell you, he deserves every friggin' award he gets. Okay. And I am, <clears throat> I've rattled on enough. Okay. So I'm going to stop rattling on and I'm going to just, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to shut the front door here. And I'm going to say that if you are a person who in any which way, shape or form suffers from a mental illness, knows a person close to you who suffers from mental illness, thinks you may be suffering, but isn't quite, but aren't quite sure how, okay? Um, or just wants to know more about the mental health community and any initiative and like, and see a perfect, like, you know, um, a perfect, not a how-to, but a how-not-to, you know, then, or if you just want to watch a damn good movie, then watch this movie, okay? You've got nothing to do. We're all stuck at home. So seriously, put this on. And you will, and you'll come away with it maybe thinking different things for me. I don't know. Okay. But maybe you'll, maybe you'll watch it and you'll be like, you don't even get the mental health perspective. And that's understandable if you don't, not everybody is as hypersensitive to it as I am. But I do know that Todd Phillips who directed the movie meant it to be in that particular capacity. And I do know that it's something that's been talked about before. I'm not the first person to equate mental illness with Joker. And I absolutely, um, like herald this movie as one of the most prime examples of societal ambivalence to the human condition that I've seen in a very, very, very long time. And I can't um, recommend this movie highly enough. And I also can't recommend highly enough that if you feel as though you're suffering from anything that Arthur Fleck suffers from or anything that I'm suffering from or anything that's totally different from that, the first step is admitting you have a problem please do yourself a favor and get some help because otherwise it's not going to end the way it ends in a movie. You know, that's, that, that was a Hollywoodized version. You know, um, we don't, you know, there's no such thing as Batman. So we got to fix things ourselves. <laughs> I've said enough. I'm going to go. And <clears throat> that's pretty much all. So take care of yourselves, take care of each other and recognize the signs people and watch Joker. It's a damn good film. Bye.